Frid älskade vänner och shalom. Välkommen till en uppdatering som jag ska lägga in här. Klockan är 13.25 svensk tid. Det eskalerar ner i Mellanöstern och därför jag lägger in den här nu. Och ni får höra själva i videon vad som händer men det är oroväckande information som kommer och ja det här skrämmer en hel värld faktiskt. Gode Gud bevara oss. Så vill jag påpeka också att vi kommer att lägga upp en podd. Ja, vi har ju en podd som heter Parosia-podden. Där har Elvård precis nu spelat in ett budskap om alla de under som Gud gjorde under Jom Kippor-kriget 1973. Så håll till god och Gud välsigna er. Vi uppdaterar er så fort vi hör något nytt från Israel. Amen. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with the Samson option, but basically it's a form of um, nuclear deterrence that Israel has. Uh, it's one of uh, Israel's uh, nuclear doctrines. Basically, it just states that if Israel were to come under attack and, and attack from multiple sides at one time and Israel's uh, existence was threatened, then Israel would lash out with nuclear weapons, okay? And uh, the reason why it's called the Samson option is it's named after Samson, the uh, biblical figure who uh, pushed down the towers in the, um, in the uh, temple with the Philistines, and he killed himself and all the Philistines with him, okay? And so basically that's what Israel would do if they were to be surrounded like they are right now, Okay, they're surrounded on all sides. Uh, they have uh, Hezbollah to the north. They have Syria to the northeast. And uh, they're all getting ready to move in on Israel. Okay, so it's, it's possible that Israel could execute the Samson option if this situation continues to spiral out of control. Okay, we're hearing that Hezbollah is, is gearing up to go into Israel. Um, And uh, like I said earlier, I think that uh, the Hamas militants were just pawns and Hezbollah and Syria are just waiting uh, for the right opportunity to uh, attack Israel at the right moment. But I want to just update you uh, with some of the latest headlines, okay? Uh, oh, and before I forget, the Samson option was almost used in 1973 during the Yom Kippur War when uh, Arab forces were overwhelming Israeli forces, then Prime Minister Golda Meir authorized a nuclear alert in Israel and ordered 13 atomic bombs be readied for use by missiles and aircraft. Okay, and uh, at that time, the ambassador to the U.S. Uh, asked President Nixon for more supplies and that if uh, the U.S. didn't give them supplies, then very serious conclusions may occur. Uh, and eventually the U.S. gave Israel more supplies and they didn't use those atomic bombs, okay? But uh, Israel came close to using the Samson option during the Yom Kippur War. And this is way worse than the Yom Kippur War, okay? This is way worse. Um, you know, uh, Hezbollah, Hamas, Syria, Iran, they've had a long time to plan this all out. Uh, we do know that Vladimir Putin is on the side of the Palestinians. I'm sure he had a hand in planning this whole thing. I'm sure Russian weapons are uh, currently being used by Hezbollah and Hamas. Um, Putin said earlier today that the land on which the Palestinians live is historically their land. Okay. Um, so this is a very serious situation. It's continuing to escalate. Uh, I want to read to you uh, what the leader of Hezbollah said. He said that uh, the U.S. is a full partner of the Zionist aggression in Israel and is responsible for the killings, crimes, siege, and destruction of homes and horrifying crimes against innocent civilians. Okay, so Hezbollah is saying that the U.S. is basically full partner to Israel And they're basically going to treat the U.S. like Israel. That's what Hezbollah is, is saying now. Okay. And they've already threatened American bases in Iraq and around the world. Uh, be prepared, guys. Okay. This Friday could be crazy. Um, I'm going to try to live stream this Friday if I can and cover the, the Friday the 13th.
possible global jihad. I will be covering it live. So uh, make sure you're subscribed. Um, but we have some major breaking news that a Marine Corps expeditionary unit of the United States capable of uh, conducting special operations has departed early from a scheduled exercise with Kuwait as a result of emerging events. Okay, so we have U.S. Marine Corps uh, Special Ops, MARSOC, basically, uh, an expeditionary unit uh, departing a scheduled exercise with Kuwait early because of everything going on. Okay, so they're going to be relocated probably close to Israel, and they may, they may even get deployed into Israel, into Gaza, I mean, Lebanon, whatever, depending on how things escalate. Um, so that's pretty concerning. We also have some breaking news uh, coming from uh, Biden. Biden said that more F-35s and F-18s are going to be deployed to the region. We also have breaking news that U.S. special ops in Europe are on high alert to be deployed into uh, the conflict zone for possible hostage rescue missions. Okay, so U.S. special ops in Europe on high alert. Okay, um, we have breaking news that a U.S. Navy flotilla has appeared opposite of uh, Haifa in Israel with landing ships of the MLP type uh, built on the basis of super tankers and designed mainly for special ops forces and amphibious landings from the sea and from the air. Okay, so an amphibious uh, a flotilla of amphibious landing ships used for amphibious landings and special ops uh, has shown up uh, right next to Haifa. Okay, this is a map of Israel. This is where Haifa is. You can see Lebanon is right near Haifa. So there were people in Haifa that were actually taking pictures of this U.S. Navy uh, flotilla. There were like five or ten of these giant amphibious landing ships off the coast. And I can't show you guys the pictures because, uh, you know, YouTube is sensitive with any kind of like footage uh, that you can't 100 percent verify or whatever. Um, but there was a picture showing this giant flotilla. OK, so the U.S. is moving Marines. They're moving uh, amphibious ships, amphibious landing ships. Special ops are on high alert. They already uh, declared a few days ago that special forces are going to be going into special ops are going into Israel and Gaza. OK, for hostage rescue. Um, so, you know, this is just, it's escalating by the day, guys. There's so much news. It's hard for me to keep up with it. Uh, we have the prime minister of, uh, Israel and the former defense minister, uh, Benny Gantz forming a emergency unity government in Israel to manage the war against Hamas. Okay. So, uh, you know, that would be like the equivalent of like, uh, you know, the Trump administration merging with the Biden administration if we got attacked by, you know, China or something or Russia, okay, if there was a nuclear war, both parties would form a government. Um, so that's huge news. We have some very concerning information coming out that apparently uh, Iran has uh, been moving ballistic missiles around and there's actually a video that I saw and it looks legit of these uh, missile trucks going through. It looks like some city in Iran. OK, uh, mobile mobile uh, missile launchers. OK, um, uh, it's just too risky for me. But there was a video that I was able to see. Uh, looks like in sometime uh, in the night, uh, there were uh, some uh, Iranian missile trucks moving around, ballistic missile trucks. OK, so Iran is readying their ballistic missiles for a worst case scenario, a showdown with the U.S. Um, so, uh, you know, get prepared, guys. OK, and like I said the other night, the U.S. has very limited options when it comes to striking Iran. Their only option at this point is basically a full-scale nuclear attack of Iran targeting all of their military bases and their underground bunkers. A conventional strike is not enough to damage all the bases because the bases are so big and many of them are underground, especially their nuclear facilities. 
So you need to have a large ordinance to destroy those bases and those underground facilities and conventional missiles, conventional warheads are just not powerful enough, okay? So uh, the U.S. would have to probably order a limited attack option, uh, which is basically a, a nuclear strike uh, that's limited just to one area of the world, which would be Iran. Iran is also a huge country geographically. It's like the size of Alaska. So uh, there's a huge amount of territory. It's vast. It's not that easy to uh, just fly F-16s and drop, you know, bombs and stuff like that. Um, so it would be a massive undertaking, but it looks like Iran is getting prepared. They're moving ballistic missiles around. Uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said earlier today in a uh, press conference that every Hamas operative will die. Hamas is ISIS. We will crush them. Okay. I mean, just doesn't get uh, any stronger than that. Uh, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said, we will wipe Hamas off the face of the earth. Okay. I mean, this is just really, really crazy stuff, guys. Uh, just so surreal. Um, Secretary of the Arab League said, we call on Israel to stop the war immediately, end the occupation, and establish a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. Okay, so the Arab League wants to give Jerusalem away to the Palestinians. Of course they would. Um, Turkish President uh, Erdogan held negotiations with Hamas representatives in Ankara and they were talking about releasing hostages held in Gaza. Okay, so the Turkish president is trying to work some magic to release Western hostages in Gaza. And I wanted to just update you on that nuclear power plant in Israel that was apparently uh, having some kind of a security incident earlier today. I want to mention I cannot confirm 100% if that's true or not. Uh, but we do have some information coming from Hebrew Channel 12 in Israel, Hebrew Channel 12, that said that drones from Lebanon were trying to target the nuclear power plant near Demona in Israel, okay? Uh, again, I cannot confirm this 100%, but I wanted to just share it with you. Uh, if that's true, that's very, very concerning. Uh, and earlier I reported that there was a huge drone attack from uh, Lebanon into northern Israel, and uh, Israel said that that's actually not true, that there was actually a malfunction in their warning systems about all these drones coming into northern Israel, and, and these drones never ended up going into Israel, supposedly. According to the Israeli government, that's what they say, um, but uh, that's, that's according to the Israeli government. They're saying that their, uh, their warning system got messed up, and uh, Palestinian sources are saying that there's already some raids underway in Gaza City, that there's already some uh, Israeli forces in Gaza City, apparently. Um, Israel is telling its citizens to go into bunkers and basements the next few days and stock up on supplies. Obviously, that's a bad sign. And I showed you guys in my streams and in my videos all the empty grocery stores and supermarkets in uh, Israel, people have just uh, been on uh, a panic buying spree, okay? And this is why the Israeli Defense Force is distributing weapons and ammunition amongst the civilians in Ashkelon, okay, which is interesting. Um, I don't know what they're expecting to go down in Ashkelon, but they're giving out weapons and ammunition to regular people, civilians, uh, in Ashkelon. So they're maybe expecting some kind of massive invasion from uh, various directions, maybe from uh, Lebanon or Syria, or I don't know what. Uh, I can't show you the footage, unfortunately.